Hello and welcome back. We're going to be talking today about the pen tool. Now this is an amazing tool. Um, it's been around for a while. And it, it, the, the power and usefulness of this tool is, is so dramatically underrated. It, it, it honestly makes me really sad. So uh, I'm going to be going over the basics of the pen tool, how it works, and some things you could use it for in terms of editing your Second Life pictures. So I just got a blank document here before we move over to our working picture, um, which is actually getting pretty close to being done before we start doing some other fun stuff like lights and effects and stuff and working on maybe doing a quick composite into a background. But first, the pen tool. So this is C uh, Photoshop CC. And over here we got the pen tool. Now, if you don't know, if you click and hold on a lot of these tools here over here, you can get a sub menu. And I'll explain what these all do here. So the pen tool is pretty much the only thing I use. I also use the convert point tool and these other tools sometimes, but I'll explain them as we go along. So when we talk about the pen tool, it does, it does, it, it does one of two things here. It either make a shape, and or it'll and or it'll make a path. And when we say that, we mean vector paths. Now, what's a vector path? A vector path is it, it's a line that is used to do a whole bunch of stuff. Like we can stroke that line, we can use that line to mask stuff out but it is not limited to the pixels on your screen. So let me give you a quick example here. So I'm gonna take my, my brush tool here and uh, let me get a perfectly hard round brush. So if I just click once, get a nice looking square. Well, now let's zoom in here. We can see that we get down to the pixel level here at 3200% that we can see where these pixels are, you know, and so if we select these, we're only going to be selecting the halfway point between those colors of pixels. And, you know, and this will work for a lot of things. But it's not perfect and we can't adjust it later easily. This is where the pen tool comes in because it is not limited to the pixels on the screen. It's all stored information in math. And thankfully we don't have to do the math, it'll do it all for us. So let's take our pen tool and I'm gonna make a very simple path here. I'm gonna make a point and another point. And now we have a path. Oops. <laughs> And I can keep clicking, and then I can click the originating point, and now we've closed our path. That's one path. Okay, let's back up here. Now, if I click and drag, we get these anchor points, these anchor bars, and I'll explain these in a minute. And if I do that into another point, click and drag, what's happening here is it's curving. Now, let me explain how this curve works. So, let's say I just got a regular point, and I'm gonna click and drag. Now, what's happening here is between these two points, this half of the anchor point, this control bar is determining how much from this end it is going to curve and how far it's going to curve and where it's going to curve. And you can have two anchor points between two points. You have another anchor point right here, oops, and also give that one um, a curving. And you can see, we can adjust both of these. Um, if you don't know, what I'm doing here is I'm holding control in the pin tool as I make this path, and we get our direct selection tool here. And I'll explain that in a minute. And we can actually control and select these points. We can come back and we can adjust what we're doing. Got half of a yin yang already. Anyway, so 
Now, let's, let's zoom in on this little curve point right here. Now, you remember in the circle, when we got really close, down to 3200%, it wasn't very smooth. You could actually see the pixels. Check this out. Let's zoom in to 3200%. Look how smooth that selection is. And check it out. We can come back and we can adjust these. We don't have to redraw our mask or anything. It does it for us. And that's kind of the basic of, you know, how vector paths work. And it gets, it actually gets a lot more complicated, but this is kind of the general idea. Um, now, when you're working and making a path, I, I recommend you pull up your path window here. And if not, you can just go to window, paths, expense out here. Now, when you're, when you're making a new path, you can either set new path or by default, if you don't have a previous path selected, it'll be called the work path. Now, if I double click on this, I can name this, we'll just call this path one. Because you can, all, you can have as many paths as you want in a document, as far as I know. I've never gotten up above like a hundred paths, so. <laughs> so later I can come back to this and I can adjust it. Well, what's cool about this is, well, I can come through here and I can control click my path and I can fill it. Now, yes, when I do fill it, it will show pixels down at that pixel level. However, if I don't like it, I can always come back and I can change how it works or its shape. So that's where this other tool comes in called the path selection tool and the direct selection tool. Now the difference is path selection tool will allow you to click on the path. It also allow you to drag it around, but you know, a lot of times you don't want to drag depending on you know, what your path is, or maybe it's just slightly left and you can just move it that way. However, if the direct selection tool, you can select the anchor points, which are what these dots are, and you can adjust them. And the one you have selected is when that, that square is fully black. It's filled in, it's not hollow like you see over here and right here. This is selected, this are not. So if I click this one, it'll change. And when you change, when you click on them, it'll bring up both anchor points between that point. So if I select this point right here, it's gonna bring up the anchor paths for this side and for this side. Now we don't have any on this side, so, you know, <laughs> we don't have any, but we can add them. But once you're in here, you don't have to hold control. You can freely move these around. Now, if you hold control in this mode, or, <laughs> sorry, if you hold alt in this mode, you can adjust one side of those anchor paths, which is pretty fun. Also, if you click on these, ooh, sorry, you know what? Probably a bad idea to go over that right now. That's advanced stuff. Okay, back up. Um, so the other tool um, in this I want to talk about is this add anchor point tool where we can go along here with our path selected and we could add an anchor point. And what this does allows us to add more curve points if we want to. Uh, the last, the other two, and then of course the delete anchor tool will allow us to delete points. Back up and stuff here, and then the last one that I use personally, at least, is this convert point tool. Now, what this does is it'll either it'll either add or remove these bending anchor bars. So if I click right here, it's going to remove them from that point. Oh, it is being about today. If I click and drag on an anchor point. I can add them back. If I just click, it removes them. Click and drag, adds them back. So in case you get something like this happening, not a big deal. You can always come back with this tool, click and drag with those anchor points. And you got your shape again. Okay, so that's one part. 
the next part is talking about the masks of vectors because that's where this fun really comes in so let's let me get rid of this path here so let me just delete path and I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to make a little curved shape here okay and I've closed it off by clicking that last point that we started with now if you click on a layer mask, you'll add a layer mask. But if you click add that mask again, it adds a vector mask. Now why is this different? The difference is this allows us to control the mask with the vector points, with this path that we've made. So let me go ahead and delete the layer mask and just keep the vector mask so it's obvious what we're doing. So let me fill this whole layer with just black, okay? So that fills in our shape. Well, check this out. If I come back and I take my path selection tool, select my path, I can now adjust, <laughs> oops, I can now adjust my shape. And what's actually happening here is I'm adjusting the mask so we can make fine-tune adjustments to our mask for whatever reason we need to I mean it's it's really not that complicated it just sounds complicated it sounds fancy okay still with me now in these tools, there is some other stuff I want you to be aware of. So in the, the pen tool, when I say pen tool, I mean just the regular pen tool. I almost always use just path. When you use shape, you actually make a vector shape, which is something I'm not going to cover in this one. I might cover it in the tutorial, but you can just you know check YouTube for other videos on it. It's pretty easy. Um, and I never use pixel. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing is, is that you can actually make your selections into a shape or into a selection, which personally I just like using the paths to make our, my selections. And the last thing I want to talk about, the last couple things here are how it makes these things. So I always use the exclude overlapping shapes and this is getting into advanced pen tool and vector masking. Don't worry about it, you just leave it on your default, and the default is the exclude overlapping shapes. Uh, the next one over is how it aligns, and I want to align to itself with its selection. So again, advanced stuff, don't worry about it for now. And then the last one is the layers in vectors, which is completely separate to the layer system in Photoshop. Again, advanced, maybe later. <laughs> The last thing though is rubber banding. Now this is really cool when you're using um, the free pen tool, but I never recommend it. However, I do recommend that you do use the auto add delete feature because that way you're not having to constantly select the last point and then make your next point. Okay, sorry, I know it might be a little confusing, but we're going over the basics here because this is like a whole nother deep thing in Photoshop that, again, it's not really covered for some weird reason. All right, so why was this? Why would this be useful? Now, well, have a practical example. All right, now as you can see here on the document we've been working on, we've actually made some pretty good progress. So here's the before, and here's the after, where we're at so far. And I've only used the stuff I've covered about in my previous videos here, except for the look of far too, which I will get to in the next video. And it, it's really not complicated at all. It's actually infinitely easier than the pen tool. <laughs> so since we can make curved shapes, we can make natural selections, we can make perfect selections, all right? So let me make a new layer here, just to have a new layer. Or, this layer's 32, yeah. These are how many layers I have so far. <laughs> So let's say we wanted to put a better shadow under her chin. Well, I could just come in here with my paintbrush tool 
and I could paint it. Ooh, that is hard. Let's make that soft. Oh, and by the way, quick tip here. If you hold Alt and do your right click, you can change by dragging left and right the size of your current brush and how hard it is. Pretty fun stuff. Really handy too. Um, also, uh, to change the size of your brush, you can also use the bracket left and the bracket right to make them bigger and smaller. A little nice keyboard shortcuts there. So let's make this layer a soft light layer. And I'm just going to paint in that shadow in that area right there. Well, that's a pretty shitty shadow, so what would, what would I normally do? Well, I'd mask it. Come back through here very carefully. Try not to fuck up, and I already, sorry, <laughs> messed up right here. And, well, that doesn't make for a very good mask. And if we lower the opacity, it's still not very good. Alright, so let's start over. New layer. But this time, let's take our pen tool. Alright. Now, I know I want the shadow to be in approximately this area down here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click... Eh, let's do right there, right there, right there, and this is making a path right now. Okay, now that I'm up here, I'm going to need to curve this without doing a hundred plus points through here. So I will click and drag. And I'm going to get this close to what I want, which is probably about right there. And I'm going to come back and adjust this in a minute. And then I'm going to Alt-click this last point. What this does is it removes that bend bar from the next point, because I don't need it. So then, see how it took off that other bar? So now if I click and add a new point, it's a straight point and will be automatically curved. And I'm just going to bring this path and close it. Okay. Now I am going to make a mask from this path. Now you can see we have a vector mask. Awesome. Alright, so let's, change, let's fill this layer with black. And... You know, that is, now it's close enough. And let's set it to soft light. Okay, well... That doesn't look right, does it? Let's fix it. So, let's take our direct selection tool here. I'm going to select this point, and I'm going to adjust this point to where it should be. I'm also going to move this point uh, probably more over there, and then I will oops, adjust this point. And that's looking a lot better. Uh, maybe pull out this point right here a little bit, because it's going over the the neck side of the neck there so that's looking awesome okay here's the problem though this is, doesn't look like a shadow so I'm going to delete all of that and now I'm going to use my brush and I'm going just going to paint in this area that shadow you can see that is a perfect shadow and if I want to I can always come back and I can adjust this outline if I need to. Pretty cool, right? Something else I want to talk about. In your properties window, if you have the mask selected, you can change its density and you can change its feathering. And this is all non-destructive. Pretty cool stuff. So that's one thing you could do with it. I don't need to feather for this thing though, but you get the idea. That's one thing you can do with a vector mask. Here's another example. Oops. <laughs> Let's say I got some jagged prims or some, you know, some edge of the skin or something that's not exactly, well, even, or you know, they're bumpy, or they're sharp, which is, in, you know, in some cases. Well, we can use our, our pen tool to make a perfect rounded selection. And then we can push and pull the skin using various means. I'm going to use the smudge tool in this case. 
so let's round out the shoulder so I'm gonna make a point like right there and then I'm going to do another point yeah, right here in the middle now I don't want this other anchor bar if affecting the next point which is gonna be down here because I want as little points as possible You know, on second thought, I'm going to keep it, because I don't want to dip in. Okay, that looks good. And then I will just make this shape complete. And, you know, that doesn't look half bad. Now you're saying, well, you didn't do anything yet. Well, okay. I'm going to save my work path, so I can just come back to it later. Now... I need to smudge on my original cutout layer here. This is, unfortunately, this is a destructive process, unless you do a couple of the things that I haven't covered yet. But so I'm going to control click this path, and that'll give us that perfect selection of that area. So now, if I come in and I take my smudge tool, and maybe at like around 50-ish percent here, with a little bit of a large brush, ooh, and a regular soft round brush. I'm just going to click and pull out to make sure I have that entire area filled. And then I'm going to select the inverse. So everything but this inside will be selected. And to do that, you can go to select, inverse, but of course, me being the keyboard junkie, control shift I. And now I'm just gonna push back in. All right, let's deselect, check that out. Like how smooth that is now. To give you an example, here's our check layer of the original cutout before we did absolutely anything. It's not bad. There. Now you should go off and play with the pen tool. That's two things you can do with your pen tool, and they're relatively easy. Like, comment, subscribe, and if you have any questions, let me know, and I will try to answer them, or I'll just make another video. Have a good one. Thank you.